Watch this afternoon, scheduled for 2.13 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, just 36 and a half minutes from now. They should reach the moon at about 7.30 p.m. on Tuesday. They touch down on the moon uh, at 9.55 p.m. on Wednesday. The first walk is at 2.25 a.m. Eastern Time on Thursday, early in the morning. Uh, second walk at 10 o'clock that night. The liftoff from the moon then the following day at 7.22 in the morning. The docking uh, with the LEM returning to the command module where Swigert will be waiting at 10.58 a.m. on Friday morning. They leave the moon at 1.42 p.m. on Saturday, splash down a little south of the equator out in the mid-Pacific at 3.17 p.m. on Tuesday, April 21st. If the flight of Apollo 13 goes as the others do, they'll be right on target within a couple of miles of where it's been planned for them to drop for the last two years, and uh, they'll be right on time within a few seconds of that uh, planned landing time, which is one of the remarkable feats. So half a million mile voyage, uh, uh, four days around the moon and back uh, to Earth and be right on time, just as they planned it in the book. Nelson Benton and Scott McLeod at Grumman Aerospace on Beth Base, Long Island, have a look for us at the two walks on the moon, the highlights of this trip that uh, Lovell and Hayes are going to take. Gentlemen? Walter, the moonwalks that are scheduled are greater in time and the distance that they hope to cover on the lunar surface and in the requirements that they face during those walks. The CBS News simulation in condensed form has Scott McLeod in the role of the commander and Grumman engineer Charles Smith performing the functions of the lunar module pilot. And it begins, of course, on uh, next uh, Thursday morning, very early, when uh, the commander will start his egress from the limb. And we might note very early in this that that stripe on uh, the commander's helmet, a red stripe, he also has stripes on his sleeves and his pants legs, is to help uh, scientists distinguish between uh, the commander and the lunar module pilot. As he descends the ladder, he opens a equipment storage uh, package. And there, of course, is the plaque, which has Mattingly's name on it. But as you reported earlier, they will be carrying an extra plaque with uh, Swigert's name on it. At the bottom of the ladder is uh, familiarization. You see the stripes on the sleeves of the commander so that in photographs and in television transmissions back to Earth, uh, the commander can be distinguished from the lunar module pilot. These suits allow a little bit more freedom. These were made by ILC Industries, who make the real suits. The lunar module pilot still inside, while the command pilot gets what is called a contingency sample, a very quick bag of lunar dust in case the moonwalk should have to be terminated for some reason or other ahead of time. He takes that bag off uh, the end of the rod and places it in his left pocket down by his knee. Then uh, the lunar module pilot egresses uh, some uh, 20, 20 minutes or so later, thus becoming, if all goes well, the sixth man to set foot on the surface of the moon. Among the uh, very early functions that are performed by the crew and their stay on the moon is to prepare a supplemental antenna to move into position, which uh, we'll tell you a little bit more about in just a moment or so, and also to uh, get the television camera all set to go. And this time, there is an uncapped camera so that we can see that first step of the crew onto the moon, but one of the first things they'll do when they get to the camera itself is to put a lens cap on it. That uh, something that was learned from the flight of Apollo 12 when it's believed that the camera being pointed directly at the sun is what rendered it useless. And in the event, however, that this color camera does not uh, perform properly, there is another black and white camera on board the LAM that can be brought into use by one of the crewmen going back inside, bringing it out and hooking it up. There is an effort planned in the surface operations to put the television camera into position, into strategic position during the lunar walk so that the activities uh, can be observed. And this is uh, an auxiliary antenna that deploys like an inverted umbrella. And Scott, what is the 
Why do we need another antenna? We're getting pictures back and getting data back all the time. Well, this is called the erectable S-band antenna, and the purpose of it is so we can get everything back at the same time. We don't need a timeshare, for example, our data. It carries a heavier load than the... Uh, yes, it does. ...than the uh, antenna on board the spacecraft itself. Now, the lunar module, module pilot is going back into the LAM. Uh, the reason being that he has to go back in and get to the right switch to activate that antenna, rather than being able to do it from the surface itself. Very early in the first EVA is the deployment of the American flag, which has been done on both uh, preceding flights. There's first a small staff driven into the surface, then a second one attached, and the flag deploys itself with its own built-in wind, since there is no wind on the moon. In each case there, what they're trying to do, as you pointed out before, is keep that TV camera pointing at uh, portions that can be seen so that they will try and stay in the field and everyone here can observe what is going on the whole time. The camera has been moved over to what is called the scientific equipment quadrant uh, to observe what will be done there. And what will be done there is really a great part of the purpose of the flight. What's going on there, Scott? Well, he's pulling out one package, the first package from the ALSEP, where the scientific equipment is. First he pulls it out on that boom, then we'll pull the other lanyard, and that drops it down to the surface of the moon. Rather down rapidly. <laughs> yes. And then there's a second uh, part of the scientific package that, that's removed by hand. The package contains uh, another seismic measurement device to measure moonquakes. It contains... Uh, an atmosphere detector, if there is any atmosphere. All of this forms signals that are sent back to Earth, and it's powered by a radioactive generator. And this is the rather ticklish and tedious process of uh, loading the fuel into that generator. Scott, uh, it must be handled carefully. Yes, it's a very high temperature. Uh, right About 1,200 now, degrees. Right now, the uh, LEM pilot is taking the cap off, and he will extract the core then the commander will tilt the package on the surface of the moon over so they can be easily entered into there. That's the, that puts the generator all together. There are a couple of special tools for handling this uh, hot hunk of plutonium to avoid brushing the spacesuits because it could do some damage to the suits should it uh, brush them. This is a, another solar wind composition measurement. Actually, it's uh, aluminum foil, and it picks up particles. They'll take it off and take it back with them. Now, the commander has taken the two packages and put them together with a bar, and he's carrying that across to where they'll deploy the scientific package. Now that, that big barbell is about 215 pounds on Earth, which it's heavy. Uh, <laughs> reduces it to about uh, 36 pounds on the moon's surface. They go, I think, about 300 feet away so that they will not, the scientific packages will not be affected when the ascent stage fires and they go back up again to get it out completely from the blast. Deploying this uh, scientific package takes a, a great portion of the first four-hour uh, walk on the lunar surface. That gadget that looks like a sophisticated long-stemmed water fountain is a central station that uh, takes all of the information from the seismic package, uh, from the lunar atmosphere detector, from the other experiments, and uh, collects them electronically and sends them back to Earth electronically. And this is a new gadget for the flight of Apollo 13. This is the lunar drill. And Scott, that's a fairly sophisticated piece of machinery. Yes, it is. The LEM pilot in this particular experiment will be doing all the drill work. That's Fred Hayes. Here he's assembling the drill, and he'll drill down the drill, I believe, three different holes. Has a capability of going about 10 feet down. And uh, you drill a little ways, and uh, then put on another bit, drill some more. Three holes, uh, two of them are for heat probes that will be inserted uh, down low in the moon surface, up to perhaps nine or 10 feet, and connect it to that uh, central station. They'll send back, uh, temperature readings that could tell something more about the uh, the lower composition of the moon, what it is below the surface. And then there's a third hole to be drilled, which uh, will just give scientists a deeper sample 
of the, uh, well, not the earth, <laughs> of, the, of, the, of the soil on the moon. I don't know whether you can see it clearly. There is a lanyard that he's holding on to as he inverts the drill each time to set it down. One of the engineers who was involved with the development of this drill told me that it cost uh, 2.7 megabucks to build. That's uh, space ease for 2.7 million dollars, but they come out, I think, at a cost of about 175,000 dollars apiece. Now, the heat probe is being inserted into the hole. It's a, a highly sophisticated thermometer, really, Scott. Yes. This will transmit the information back as to the temperature under the surface of the moon. Here he's adjusting. He just finished the adjustment. I guess he's inserting it again there. <laughs> 